Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk to you about five things I love about Shanghai. So if you don't know, I lived in Shanghai about five years. I went there to work with my friends on a company and ended up staying there for five years. I didn't know at the time I was going to stay there for five years, but that's how long I ended up staying there. And the reason for that is because after the first one or two years, I enjoyed it so much, I wanted to stay there longer. Shanghai is great for a number of different reasons. I'm going to go into them in this video. The first one is convenience. So Shanghai is an incredibly modern city, but it's a city that's built on layers and layers and layers of buildings. So there's 24 million people, I believe, in Shanghai, and it's so densely populated that, that there's so many conveniences within just a few blocks of where you live. There's a ton of shopping malls that are super modern, that are recently built with the latest technology and latest materials. There is all the kinds of internet applications you can use, food delivery, ride sharing. And in general, these services are much cheaper than the ones in the US. So you have access to everything that a modern city can offer. Honestly, a city that's even more modern than the cities in the US or Europe. You have all that at the touch of your finger, you know, via your phone. And it's incredibly easy to get around Shanghai using their public transportation or Didi. It's not expensive at all. And it's just a great urban jungle of adventure that can be had. So Shanghai is great for all the convenience that, that it offers uh, at the cost that they offer it in. The second thing is safety. So in the US, unfortunately, over the last couple of years, especially in California and places like that, crime and safety have been a much bigger concern. As Asian American, I've seen a lot of, you know, increase in Asian crimes, which I think is very unfortunate. But outside of that, there's also just a lot of petty crime. You know, if you're out late at night in the US and you're walking around, you need to be careful who's around you. You need to be careful shady characters that might be on some type of drugs or people that might be trying to take advantage of you, rob you or worse. In Shanghai and in parts of China, that's really not an issue. Society there is quite a bit more lawful. These concerns about violent crimes or even petty theft are not something that I had to worry about at all on a daily basis in Shanghai. Shanghai was incredibly safe if you were a girl you could walk around at midnight uh, more or less by yourself without a man or an escort or friends and you would be safe within Shanghai proper. Of course, it's good to be vigilant, but if that same situation were in the US, you're walking around downtown San Francisco as a woman by yourself at night, you know, you might run into some issues. So Shanghai is really a great place in terms of safety. And that's something that I do miss now that I'm back in the US. The third thing is going to be the variety and hustle and bustle of the city. So I've already said that it's incredibly convenient. You can get food delivery for not a lot of money. It's easy to get transportation. But as I said, Shanghai is incredibly modern. It's like New York, as if New York was built just five years ago. Most of the buildings are new. The uh, shopkeepers and businesses there are incredibly competitive. They're working really hard to earn your money. So they set up very elaborate dining and restaurants and experiences. There's a lot of young people there. So I would say Shanghai in terms of culture is one of the best in the world. It's really a paradise if you're a 20 something or young 30 something single and just looking to have fun. Shanghai has everything that you could imagine. The fourth thing is the cost of living in Shanghai. So rent is not cheap, especially if you want to live in the city. I would say that rent is comparable to other places in the world. When I was living in Shanghai, we paid uh, just about 3000 US dollars for our apartment in central Shanghai, modern skyscraper with good amenities. You know, we were living good life. So we're spending quite a bit on living. Uh, of course, in Shanghai, if you want, you can spend even more money um, or you could save money as well. I think if you're living in Shanghai, you could probably spend 2000 or 1500 US dollars and live maybe a little bit further from the city or live in a building that's not necessarily as nice or modern, um, but still has ready access to the rest of the city and is still incredibly convenient. So rent, I would say, is on par with the US or European counterparts. It's going to cost a little bit more money to rent an apartment, but going out, eating, just enjoying Shanghai is going to cost you a lot less than other cities. When I was in Shanghai, I would routinely take Didi and Didi is essentially same as like Uber. It's a ride sharing service, a private car a service. You set your location, your pickup time, they'll pick you up and drive you wherever you want to go. It could cost anywhere from $1, $5, maybe $10 to get around uh, Shanghai per ride. 
If I was in any modern city in the US and I was taking an equivalent Uber, the cost would be anywhere from three, four, five times more expensive. That means on a night out, you know, you can go to two or three places and you're not going to break your budget at all. It's very affordable uh, and it's safe. The cars are new. The drivers are, you know, typically pre-screened uh, and it's really just a great ride sharing experience. I actually find that the ride sharing experience in the US is less consistent than in Asia. Um, so you're paying a lot less there and you're getting kind of a higher quality of service, I would say. Food is another big deal. You can go out to a nice modern restaurant and not pay a whole lot for a meal. Of course, there's a high end. And if you want to go spend a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars even on a meal in Shanghai, you can. Shanghai has incredible breadth and variety. There's a great upper end and also uh, a great kind of lower end. Um, you know, Shanghai really has it all. But on a typical, you know, night out, if you're going with friends to eat, you can spend $20 on a meal. You can spend $10 a meal and still eat really well um, and eat things that are presented well in a restaurant that has a great modern environment with friendly servers and kind of fun drinks and things like that. So Shanghai compared to China is probably an expensive city. But Shanghai compared to somewhere like the US, a major city here or in Europe is going to be much cheaper in terms of just going out, eating and drinking. OK, the last thing is dating in Shanghai. <sighs> For me, I grew up in Silicon Valley. Um, I would say that Silicon Valley and Shanghai are basically polar opposites. Silicon Valley attracts a bunch of brainy, smart tech nerds. Uh, I'm one of them, so I can call myself that and I can call them that. Um, but there's a bias towards uh, men. And I would say that the pool of women, you know, in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley is much less than in Shanghai. In Shanghai, kind of the opposite is true. There's a plethora of uh, very talented and beautiful uh, women in Shanghai, and they're looking for stable relationships in men. So as someone that has some worldly experience, being American, um, having a good job, being in China, it's much easier to find uh, a date and uh, go on dates with uh, with women. So I think dating um, in Shanghai is, you know, honestly, one of the best places to date. But Shanghai, it's kind of like the New York of China. And if you like Asian women, um, that's a place to be. Of course, you want to be respectful, be a good human being. So, you know, treat everyone with respect. But, um, you know, in terms of dating, Shanghai is, is a great place if you're single.